The waters of the Outer Banks provide fun and refreshing activities for all to enjoy. No matter whether you're in the ocean, the sound, or in a pool, the danger of cervical spine injury can bring that enjoyment to a tragic halt. The cervical spine is going to be the first seven vertebrae that come off the base of the skull there. So basically it's your, your neck. The cervical spine injury is going to be any injury to the, the cervical spine. So that's the bony structures and you've got the bones in there, ligaments, muscles, as well as the spinal cord. The effects can be, can be very variable. It all depends on the extent of the injury and what is injured. It can be pain, you know, muscle spasms, to broken bones, damage to the spinal cord. You can end up with numbness and tingling and you know, motor function problems. A very high up injury, you can end up with complete paralysis of the, the arms and the legs. So you can't move your arms, your legs voluntarily. You can also lose function of the respiratory muscles, so you're not able to breathe on your own. On the beach, the most common cause for a cervical spinal injury often involves what is known as shore break. Shore break is a condition at which the energy that is brought to the shore by the waves is dispersed at and near the high water line. The problem is, especially at high tide, because there's not a clear sign that that wave is going to be breaking with force, it breaks on the beach and surprises people. You consider a gallon of water weighs seven pounds-ish. That's a lot of gallons of water breaking on you. Those one foot high waves breaking onto wet sand is more than enough energy to cause an injury. That injury might be as slight as a brush burn, but could be as severe as a cervical spinal injury. Children and adults alike can be easily overpowered by shore breaking waves and thrown to the bottom head first, causing cervical spine injury. Shore break is the one that is a bit of a surprise for people because sometimes if you're not paying attention to the sea state, it does kind of creep up on you. But the other, perhaps more easily preventable, is water entries. If you are entering water of an unknown depth, it doesn't make a great deal of sense to enter head first. But that's a lot of what we see. Feet first, first time is a, is a good rule. Feet first, first time until you understand what the bottom conditions are. And even then, always err on the side of caution. Hands in front of you, dive very shallow. And if you don't need to dive, do not dive. Always stay alert to avoid potential situations that may lead to a cervical spine injury. It's very important not only to know your limits, but also to pay attention to the conditions that you are in and the conditions that are coming in. Be aware of the energy as it approaches shore and try to be able to negotiate an easy way out. If caught by surprise by a wave, remember the over-under technique. The classic game that is, is played on any day is the over and under game. If you want to have fun, you go over the wave. If the wave is too big, you want to get some control back and you know you can get under the wave and hold your breath and let it pass over your head. If you do decide to go under that wave, ball up, present a smaller profile to the wave and it will very likely push you down and away instead of down and into the body. A 20 year old male unconscious breathing, the deficit does have a pulse. In the event that a suspected cervical spine injury has occurred, it is critical that special consideration be given to the injured so as not to further exacerbate the injury. Know the signs. The symptoms can be, be variable as well. It can be you know, fairly obvious with paralysis, not able to move your arms or your legs, to uh, more subtle, just a little kind of numbness or tingling, kind of a pinprick sensation in the fingers, maybe a pain in the neck. The majority of the victims with C-spine injuries do actually walk out of the water. I've seen it myself. Uh, Typically, some just say they have a stinger or they just feel like their neck is hurting and don't realize that they've actually done significant damage to their necks. Many of the injuries that we've had in the past, uh, something, is, something like bodyboarding or skimboarding, where people have taken a very hard fall and they will try to shake it off. A little while later, they're going to be sitting in a stand and their, their muscles might spasm. And that is a sign that you know, there was an initial injury and now the body is reacting to it. If you think that there is any chance that you might have a problem, you probably do. Got a, a fall or a trauma or any concern that you've injured your cervical spine, definitely get it evaluated. Don't just kind of walk this off at home or, or wait for it to get better. I recommend seeking treatment. Now the first thing to do is definitely call 911 or grab the lifeguard. Three, one, two, three. Even if it's suspected C spine, definitely going to need definitive care, so call 911 is the first thing to do. Uh, the second thing, of course, is try to keep the person calm. If they're in the water, move them out of the water. Try not to move their neck. Most important thing is when you go to the beach, have an idea of where you're at. 
know the street address, know exactly the beach access that you come out onto. Landmarks, hotels, the piers, uh, restaurants. There are some restaurants you can see from the beach. Know exactly where you're at, that helps us better find you. Each lifeguard stand is different for each town, so just ask the lifeguard. Use the lifeguards as a resource. The number one job a lifeguard does is to prevent injuries, to prevent rescues from taking place. When in any body of water, always stay alert to your surroundings and never dive into unmarked water head first. No matter the age, it's important to remember that cervical spine injuries can happen to anyone.